we can share it out if need be. Okay, so understanding our benchmark results. Linked benchmarks are designed to do three different things. The first is to diagnose. Um, Linked Form A, which is your students just took in the fall, are used to assess prior to learning. So many of the standards that are assessed for the end of year mastery have not been taught yet. So when you see that our students might be approaching, um, might not be meeting the standards, it's because they really haven't been exposed to that standard, that content, or that skill previously. Linket Form B is what we use as a formative assessment. It's to monitor um, and to check our progress. We use that during the instructional period. So we use that probably around January after some of those students have been exposed to the standards and we can see what the students are mastering at that point. And then at the very end of the year, we have Link It Form C, which is summative. It really takes a look at, at the end of all the assessments, um, what our students have been exposed to and what they are learning. About our benchmark assessments altogether, they really help our teachers and schools determine progress towards specific topics, standards, skills for a grade level or for the course. We administer Linkit both for our ELA and math three times a year in grades three through 11. Grade two does take the, both the math and the ELA, but only in the spring. So they take form C just to give us a good idea of what they learned at that point. Form A, B and C all measure the same end of year standards. So again, at the beginning of the year, they really haven't been exposed to those standards. The middle of the year, they've been exposed to some of those standards. And by the end of the year, Form C, they should have been exposed to all of those. So that's why we really break up those um, assessment windows and then administrative periods. So we get a good look and can identify at the beginning of the year, what do our kids really need to know? What do they already know? What can we teach into? How are we doing so far in the, in the middle? And then at the end of the year, um, we are able to see how well they mastered those standards. And if there's anything that we really do need to address, we have time between the end of April, early May, when they're administered to the end of the year to really address those. When we look at the benchmark assessment scores, there are six different achievement levels within Linkit. Five are the same as NJSLA. So when we have students exceeding, um, that is the highest level of performance. When we see students are exceeding the standards, um, our second level is meeting. And then we have a, a area called bubble. This is specific only to link it. And those students are still considered to be meeting, but they're really at the bottom 10% of that meeting category. And what that then shows is that um, it's just something to keep an eye on for the teacher to take a look at what the skills they might be able to master, um, what are some of the standards they might need to take a look at to really keep them in that meeting category. So it just helps us identify a little bit with greater specificity of who those students are to keep them in the, in the meeting range. And then we have approaching, partially meeting, and then non-meeting. As you can see, Ms. Jacobs just joined. Um, she was, again, as I said, as at, the, at the board meeting. Each level of these performances, all six or five, as we said, um, correlate that are predictive of the student's actual performance on the NJSLA um, at the end of the year. So these are different levels just to kind of help us assess where our students are and make sure that we're continually pushing them and that they're able to um, understand the standards, execute the skills that they're supposed to, so we're able to see what their performance may be on the NJSLA at the very end of the school year. Our teachers have been using this data as just one of the many data points that we use to assess our students' academic performance. So we use it in combined with our different formative assessments, different grades, conferencing, um, all different ways that we get little bits of information, discussions with our students, so that we can really set individual goals for them. We can strategically differentiate and make sure we're measuring their growth towards these standards. One of the things that's really helpful is that the results are available to us immediately. And the teachers can look at it in various different ways. They can look at it by standards, different skills, rigor, different question types. Um, and they can analyze that both on the individual 
group, class, grade, or district level. And we've actually asked our teachers to look at these at various different levels so we can kind of see what we really need to identify. We've looked at these trends um, specifically so that we can um, inform our pacing where we need to spend less time or more time based on what our students know and are able to do, uh, how we can adjust our curriculum to meet the needs of our students and any professional development that our teachers might need in order for them to teach our students better and feel more supported themselves. At this point, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen, let Ms. Jacobs share hers, and she's gonna share a little bit more about the individualized reports within Linkit. And let me just make sure that she can share her screen. Okay, you should be able to do that now, Ms. Jacobs. Hi, good evening. I am going to share my screen with you and walk you through what it looks like in Linkit and to take a look at Form A or any of the Linkit forms that you'll be receiving this year and help you navigate the actual reports. So I've actually pulled up some anonymized data. These are not real students in our district. And we're gonna take a look at some anonymous results here for some students. I'm just going to select any three kids over here. So when you sign in to Linkit Student Portal, and Elizabeth, if you wouldn't mind dropping the link from the presentation into the chat. So any families who have forgotten how to join and sign in through the Linkit Student Portal, we'll put the link and the little video to the how to directions in the chat, and you can just open that up. So when you sign in, through your child account, you'll have options here for language arts and math. So when you open math, you might see different assessments. You might see an end of unit math test. You might see link at form A. When you hover over the name of the assessment for link it, it will show you the different score ranges here on the right and the color will tell you how your child did. So you can see here, this student here, um, Y Buckley scored in the bubble range for the math link it form A. When you select the purple item detail, you'll have a lot of information in front of you. Here you will see on the top an item analysis. So this will tell you the different questions on the assessment and how your child did, whether they got it correct or incorrect. When you hover over the question number and you click it, the actual question will pop up. So you can see what was question number one. You can say, oh, they got question number two wrong. What was question number two? And you can take a look at the question right here. Right over here, this is a standards-based report. So on the left-hand side, it lists the standards for NBT2, for NBT3, and it tells you what the standard is right next to it. So it tells you the name of the standard, what the standard means, and which questions connected to those standards, and then how your child did according to that particular standard. So for example, um, helpful to go take a look down at a standard where a student didn't do so well. So right over here, 4OA3, solve multi-step word problems. You can see here, if you hover over the question, like question number two, you can take a look, hmm, what kind of a question matches that standard? This was a standard that was, that was tough for my kid, uh, for NF2. All three questions were wrong. Right over here, it tells you the percentage of the questions answered correctly. So this report over here by standard lets you know how students are doing according to each standard and the questions connected to the standards. When you scroll down, you have the information organized by topic as well as by skill. So topic tells you the kind of group of the standards of so numbers and operations in base 10 or operations in algebraic thinking, numbers and operations fractions, and sorts it for you that way. So this was a particularly strong area for this student. 
and these two areas were weaker. And down below under skill, it's much more specific. So you can say, okay, so what does my kid need to work on? Comparing on like fractions, adding and subtracting like fractions and mixed numbers. And then here on the bottom, it tells you about the different types of test questions. So this is much more in a sort of testing genre of information. So it tells you, uh, okay, how do they do on multiple choice questions? But how do they do on questions that you had to select multiple correct answers? How do they do on questions that were depth of knowledge level one, that's less rigorous than depth of knowledge two, which is a more complicated kinds of questions. This sort of gives you a bit more of information on how they're doing according to different kinds of questions on a given assessment. And those are types of things. Elizabeth, would you mind, um, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. Would you mind pulling up the presentation just so I can share with families a bit more about how the cutoff scores change from form A to B to C? Absolutely. That's the kind of information that our teachers look at too, so that they can practice with their students um, different types of questions as well. Okay, so over here, um, when you took a look at the student report, you'll see two, two pieces of information. One, you'll see the color, which tells them tells you the different cutoff score, not meeting, partially meeting, approaching, bubble meeting or exceeding, the general overall per predicted performance. But you'll also see a percentage. And it's important to know that the across the year, the expectations for each achievement level increases. So you might see in the beginning of the year, that your child received a 52%, but still is predicted to meet standard. That's because across the year, the target is moving. So while form A, a 52% may be considered predicted to meet by January, students need to score around a 62% to predict to meet by the end of the year. So um, if you had a 52% on form A, and then a 52% form B, you would be dropping to the bubble. And then 52% for approaching, again, a dro dropping one more level. So we want to see kids not only making progress in their percentages, we also are hoping that kids at least maintain, if not increase their overall performance levels. That goes with one of the questions that was just put in the chat. Um, it said, under what category are students expected to be at at the end of the year. Um, and this question is what we would ideally like to see is obviously all of our students meeting grade level expectations. Um, if that were the case, we would be absolutely thrilled. Um, and we would probably have all sorts of awards that we would be receiving as well. Um, but we are really hoping that our students are really in that meeting bubble range or as close to that as possible. We want them to be mastering and being able to um, understand the skills and content for that grade level. What we do hope is that for any student, wherever they are, that they're not regressing any, in, in any way, that when they're starting a partially meeting by the end of the year, we want them to be better than partially meeting. So we're hoping to accelerate their progress in all of our subject areas by the end of the year. To see that growth. Are there any other questions? If, if, if anybody has, feel free to pop any questions in the chat. It's, a, it's labeled Q&A on the webinar side. So if that is throwing anyone off or if anyone needs, they can raise their hand and we can unmute you if you feel like your question is easier to ask, you won't go on video, but it'll just um, unmute you so that you could ask your question verbally instead. Okay, let me... All right, Lynn, I'm gonna allow you to talk. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, thank you. Well, my question is, is it the test exactly the same each time? In other words, are the questions the same and, we're, and, and are they following along the curriculum to show progress? Did I say that right? That's a great question. Thank you so much for asking, Lynn. The, 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 um, the tests are, each test is different, 
but they measure the exact same standards. So form A, the passages and the questions are the same as the passages and questions in the middle of the year, but they are very similar and they assess the same standards. So that way we can really compare each form from A to B to C. Um, same in math. It's not the exact same question, but it's a very similar question, just, just slightly different. So it really helps us track progress. We're all, we are looking, when we look, for example, in January, we're looking at our form B results, and we're, we're going to want to know, okay, how did our kids do on what we actually taught? So maybe we haven't done our unit yet on decimals, so maybe they're not getting those questions right yet. But if we did teach a fractions unit or we taught all of our fractions units, we really want to make sure that our kids are mastering those fraction standards. We are always checking how did our kids do against what we've already taught. And we're also making sure that our curriculum, that we're covering the content that we need to teach um, in our school year prior to you know, major state testing. I hope I answered your question, Lynn. Thank you. Thank you. Sarah, I'm gonna also allow you to speak now. Sorry about that. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, I thought the uh, chart that you showed um, towards the end of the presentation was helpful in the way that you explained the bubble versus the meeting. Um, and I forget the column all the way to the right, whether it was exceeding or the expectations, but, um, and I thought it was helpful how you explained how um, the percentages change over the three forms. But when I was looking at it before it flashed away and I'm on my phone, so it's a little hard to like toggle these things and type in the question, but it looked like um, one of the last call, like the last at the bottom right of the uh, chart that the expectations then drop down again, um, if that makes sense in terms of percentages. And I was just unsure if maybe you could just touch on that do you see it went from like 84 or like 92 to 80? Yes, yeah, so I just pulled it back up so we could take a look at it all together. Too. Yeah, so, um, so this is how these percentages come about. So basically what they do is they are looking at tons and tons and tons of student performance data. So what they're saying is it's not, it, it, students who in September scored an 83% were likely by the end of the year to be exceeding standards on NJSLA. By Form C, students who scored an 80% at the end of Form C were predicted to score an exceeding in NJSLA. So these percentages, I see what you're saying, they go up and then they go down. Um, it just has to do with how overall performance is correlated to actual performance on SLA and on, on, on NJ SLA. Okay, so it, it's like predictive in terms yes. of like, and that's like I guess in the only category that I'm spotting where it that number goes from ninety two to eighty. Um, so that's yeah, that's where my question was. Okay, that makes that makes more sense. Thank you, Sarah. I'm gonna allow Sylvia to also ask her question as. Hi. Um, yes, my question is on the same subject. Uh, let's say for students uh, at the beginning score on the bubble and then at the end of the year goes to the partially meeting. Is that something to be concerned about or that is the process that at the beginning is okay to be on the bubble category and then at the end of the year to be under the partially meeting category? I think it's more helpful to take a look at the middle of the year assessment, form B to form C, because form A is um, really way before anything's been taught. Mm -hmm. So it's, it, it's a bit of a harder comparison from the beginning of the year to the end of the year, but it's a little bit more helpful to take a look at the how kids do from form B, which is January, to form C, which is sometime in the spring. And we don't want to see kids dropping levels. We do want to see kids who are on the bubble staying there or moving to meeting. Don't want to see kids going from bubble to approaching. Um, we're, we're trying to at least maintain, if not increase, performance over time. 
And that would be something that teachers could take a look at as well and really identify what are the skills and standards that maybe that student wasn't mastering at that point, that maybe that were taught and that they should have that led to that. So there, that's where the teacher really, all the information they have from that student in their classroom day in and day out put together with this gives them a much more comprehensive picture than that little snapshot would give you possibly at home. So that's why the teacher communication and support on this is also really helpful. Um, two questions. When is the next assessment? So the next assessment is form B, which will be administered in January. I think at the high school, they have a little bit more window until um, early February, just in case with midterms and things like that, people needed a little bit more time, but form B would most likely be in January for most of our students. And then how much time are students allotted for each assessment? Um, I am going to answer for the middle school and high schools about 60 minutes. Is that what they're given? Is the same thing, Ms. Jacobs, for the sure. elementary It's about 60 minutes. Students who have IEPs and have accommodations are provided those accommodations and provided the extra time. Yep. And then when is, yeah, so for elementary, she, that was just responded. And then when is the last assessment? It's in the spring. So I think our assessment window for the secondary is early May. Um, and late, late last week of April, early May. So kind of right before um, the administration of the NJSLA so that we have time to reteach or address any of the areas that maybe our students need a little bit more support in before they take that uh, final assessment, the NJSLA, which obviously will be comprehensive for the whole district. And at the elementary levels, we're doing our Form C closer to the beginning of June. A look here at any other questions. I, I think oh, we have somebody else, um, Jeff, that would also like to ask this question. Oh, Jeff, I'm so sorry. It says that you're using an older version of Zoom that we aren't able to allow you to talk. Um, so I don't know if you can type your question in the, the Q&A section. I apologize for that. So again, I just wanna make sure, cause this question came in after we just, we answered a little bit of it, that the students are given about 60 minutes to take the assessment, but if a student is um, provided extra time based on their IEP, the students are, are provided extra time for that assessment as well, just like they would any other standardized assessment. Okay. Any other questions for the chat? Sylvia, do you have another, did Sylvia have another question? I don't think so. I think I just didn't take your hand back down. I apologize. Um, start strong, um, there's a question here about when will the start strong test results be available for parents to view? And if so, when? So individual student reports will be sent home. Um, they'll be made available to us at the very, very end of December. So we plan to send them home. They'll be mailing out um, copies to us and we'll be sending those home uh, upon receipt, which I believe will be um, early December. Any other questions, feel free to put them in the chat. or if you wanna raise your hand. I see an, an, an anonymous attendee. If you could identify yourself and perhaps raise your hand. I believe, um, let's see, Sylvia has her hand up again, so let's see. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, very quick. Uh, I'm a little confused. So the linket is the benchmark assessment. Uh, do they take also the New Jersey SLA tests? And if they do, when do they take it? Three times a year too, or just one? If it's so, when? So the students take the NJSLA during the window. It's a pretty large window in the spring. Um, so each school is going to administer it um, depending on what is most convenient. When our resources are there, the students have to take it um, using technology. So all of those different pieces have to be balanced. So each school will share with you their individual schedule to be in the springtime. Um, and 
So what the district has provided is in the past, we've take all our students have taken the park or NJSLA, we've gotten those results back and it's shared with us what our students were, were not able to master at the end of the school year. What we've been utilizing with Linkit is it gives us information throughout the school year so that we're not surprised by those results at the end of the year. It allows us to really see what our students know at the beginning of the year, at the middle of the year, and at the end of the year. So we can really support them ongoing. So this is kind of all in preparation for our students to have as much support as possible in the areas that they need that support um, throughout the school year so that we are um, then really prepared to take the NJSLA in the spring. So the NJSLA is only one time and it's at the very end of the year. This is just to help us prepare and predict how our students will do on that assessment. Okay, thank you. There's a question about who creates the questions for Linkit, and that is Linkit. Um, Linkit is a company. They create their own assessments um, and have their, they're, they're an assessment company as well as an assessment data warehousing um, company. So they do work around um, designing these assessments and have tested their questions against uh, NJSLA and, and, and park assessment. So they're very similar to the kinds of questions that kids see on NJSLA, but they're created and written at Lincoln. And Sarah, I'm gonna allow you to also speak again. Yeah, so to piggyback on um, the question uh, just prior to the one regarding um, who, who makes the questions, I guess. Um, so I understand now like the scheduling for the NJSLA being in the spring. Um, and then you were talking about learning uh, each kind of each trimester, each term uh, for each test, kind of how the students are performing. Is the data that you guys are collecting uh, kind of district wide, is that being shared with parents? Because of course we can see our individual students, but is kind of district wide information being shared to see kind of how the district is performing uh, to the parents. Elena and I actually just shared at the board meeting tonight. So I think that that presentation will be posted along with this recording so that families can see all of that. Um, but you'll be able to see both um, some of the summary from the Start Strong data along with the link at Form A data um, very shortly. It's, uh, we just shared it in the public setting tonight. Okay, great. I logged on late to that, so That's I probably okay. missed it. Thank you. <laughs> Another um, Conchetta O'Brien, if you would like to ask your question. Hi, yes, I was wondering if you could um, clarify. So, Linkit is the benchmark assessment. So, Linkit is being used for the unit tests in math also. Okay, so at the elementary, um, Conchetta, are you an elementary parent? Yes. Okay, so Linkit does multiple things. It is a, um, they have, benchmark assessments, which we use, the form A, the form B, and the form C. And it also has the ability for us to put our own assessments um, and use their system to assign those assessments. So we have our math end of unit assessments into Linkit. So our kids can take our own end of unit assessments through Linkit, and it can generate um, a standards report for families and grade the assessment instantly for teachers. It gives teachers a really great way of analyzing the data for their class. Um, do you have a, a students who are in K2 or in 3-5? I have both, one in K2 okay. and one in 3-5. So we're only doing those assessments online in grades three through five. Mm -hmm. And our parallel for K through two is we've created these standards aligned cover sheets. I don't know if you're your children have taken any end of unit assessments yet, but attached to the very front of the test will be a checklist that has the standard match with all of the questions. So we almost made our own version of an item analysis to send home to families in K2. Uh, we just didn't think that our kids would um, just kind of do their best on the computer yet um, in the primary grades. We may try to transition second grade at the end of the year if teachers and kids are ready, um, but really we're focusing it primarily in grades three through five. So are you taking the investigations test for math and putting in through Linkit or is yes. Linkit it's separate test? Well, uh, we're doing both of those things. We are using, we're putting, we're taking our investigations and of unit tests and Linkit has just digitized them for us. 
those are our the, those are our investigations assessment and we're using link it link it does two things it is um, a benchmark assessment system but it's also a data warehousing platform so we are assigning our investigations tests through the platform and warehousing our results there um, but those are uh, those are the same we we could print those tests out in paper and pencil and many teachers still are giving the kids the paper and pencil version and the kids are entering the results right into the computer which allows us to share the results pretty quickly with families and also analyze all of the answers um, by standard and look for trends okay thank you Sure. Teachers will be notifying you when the assessments are posted live. We have a bit of a window from when our assessments are given and when we're posting the assessments. So you'll hear from your child's teacher after the end of unit assessment is given about when you're going to find those results in the it within Lincoln in the student portal. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And then I believe Lynn has another question. Hi. Hi. Um, getting back to the data that you had mentioned and the um, percentages and, and who are we comparing our children to? Is it not? I was confused on that. Like, are we comparing it nationally, statewide, or with other children within the classroom or the school district? So those percentages are generated by Linkit by looking at data across the state of New Jersey and how students are doing on their Linkit benchmark assessments as compared to, and, and, and how that correlates with how they did ultimately at the end of the year on NJSLA. So with through all of the students who, who participate, you know, who, who all the districts who use Linkit, they're able to predict with a good amount of accuracy on how kids end up doing on NJSLA. So that's how these, that's how these technical percentages are um, determined. Okay, so through, throughout the state of New Jersey. Yeah. Yes, because our assessment is, um, because we take a different assessment than other students. When they were comparing to Park, they may have compared to other states and also to Park, but because NJSLA is just New Jersey, um, they're only comparing students within New Jersey. Oh, interesting. Okay. Thank you so much. Sure. Any other questions? Everyone's been very helpful with their questions. We appreciate it. Well, thank you so much for joining us this evening. I apologize for hopping on late. If any other questions come up at any time, don't hesitate to reach out to me for an elementary question or to Elizabeth for a secondary question, or of course to your building principal. Um, if there's anything student specific, reach out to your teacher too. They're the experts on, on your students and how they're performing in conjunction with all of those other data points and all the other feedback they're getting from your student on a day-to-day -day basis in the classroom. Thank you so much, everybody. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Have a good evening.